Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna set up the Cora 3D printer enclosure. This specifically is the SC02. So you might ask yourself, why would I want a 3D printer enclosure? Uh, many people know that printing stuff like ABS tends to warp, especially if there's a draft or any kind of air current or a difference in temperature. Uh, so you want to keep the ambient air around your printer, around your build surface to be warm. So throwing a box over your printer is an easy way to help accomplish that. Uh, in some environments, it's a safety issue. Uh, in a school setting, they don't want little kids' hands going into moving parts, especially belts in the bed moving back and forth and what have you. And then the third thing that it accomplishes is this one in particular has particulate filtering. So 3D printers are known to emit ultrafine particles. If you can smell your 3D printer printing PLA, then it's emitting some sort of particles into the air, and that's what you're smelling. Um, some are a little more noxious than others, like ABS. Um, and this has filtering for particles down to PM 2.5, which is 2.5 micrometers in diameter. Um, and those ultrafine particles are the ones that embed themselves right in your lungs. So I don't want to scare you. If your printer's in a well-ventilated, large open space, then you're fine. If you have a very small cubicle-like office and you're sitting there beside your 3D printer for eight hours a day while it's printing, maybe not the best thing long-term for your health. So with that all said, Let's unbox this and see what comes with this kit. So the first thing to note is that this is a very heavy enclosure. Um, most of it is made out of metal and it's powder coated. I believe it's steel, though it, there may be aluminum components as well. So this would be the top of the unit and there is a ventilation fan and it's also verified by an independent laboratory to actually reduce the ultrafine particle emissions. Um, and as such, there's documentation that supports these claims as well. All right, so we have two very large panels. We have the top, we have what I believe to be the bottom, and there's a couple acrylic panels that are covered in this protective plastic film. Let's open this box and see what's in here. Obviously, it's full of accessories. So we have our build instructions, including the itemized list of contents of this package. So this is a log to keep track of when you change your filter, um, which is kind of a good idea. Uh, the filter is only going to work if it's fresh enough or not clogged. Um, so keeping track of that and maybe keeping track of the number of hours that you've printed um, because the longer you're printing, the more particles you're emitting. Um, so if it sits there dormant for three months, I probably don't need to change the filter. And then the power supply for the fan or the exhaust at the top here uh, comes with all the different tips for different regions. Um, so none of these ones would be us. This is us. Attach that on there, and then I can do away with the rest of this. So in step one of the instructions, we're gonna be assembling the left-hand panel of the machine. Um, they call it SCO2. It's one of these two big ones. And in the picture, it doesn't show this big cutout here. So I'm just gonna set this one aside. And now we're dealing with just this one with this kind of triangular pattern of holes there. So we're going to need a couple of these hinges, so I unbagged these big black things. Um, so they are the hinge mechanism. We'll need two hinges for that side. And we also need uh, six M5 by 10 millimeter bolts. So this bag of M5s here, it's quite greasy. So you may wanna have a, a rag just to wipe down the excess grease off them. The instructions do mention that they're meant to be structural. Um, so don't tighten them fully until we're sure everything's square and that everything closes, like the doors close and there's enough clearance. Once we have everything kind of aligned properly, that we can go back down and really tighten them up. So I'll grab six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then we need a couple 
of these uh, 3D printed plastic components. So they call these the SCO2 buffers. Um, there are four of them in the package, so I just figured out there's four of these, there's only two of these, it's gotta be this one. Um, so it says we need two of these. We need an SCO2 lock buffer, which has to be one of these. And we need a M5 by 14 millimeter bolt. So I've laid the panel with those three holes I mentioned earlier furthest away from me. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is attach one of the small part of these hinges with two of those shorter M5 screws. And on the left hand side, my left here, um, from the top there are two holes. We're not going to use those two. The next set of two down are what we're going to use. And this little prong is going to face away, so it's going to face towards those three triangular holes and just screw that on. And as I said before, um, we may need to adjust these uh, a little bit afterwards, so don't worry about tightening them up too much. Um, what I've done is I've just pressed down all the way in both holes and bottomed them out and then screwed it on that way, so at least it should be um, straight anyway. Uh, and then just do the same down here. Again, not using the bottom two holes, we're gonna use the next setup. Uh, take the, where are we? The other one of these, and just make sure that you don't lose this little washer on there. Put that with the bigger side. And then bolt that on with two more bolts. Great, so now it looks like that. And then on this side, we're gonna take these two blocks that we've set aside. Each one needs one screw, so that's the last of our six of those M5 screws. And these are gonna get screwed in with the one screw on the third hole from the top. So again, we're skipping the first two holes. And this little notch is going to go closest to this side panel here. So it should go like that. So don't be surprised if you have to put quite a bit of force into uh, screwing these in, because we are kind of tapping them in the hole at the time. Just make sure that they're going in straight. And then the second one is again, skipping the bottom two holes, third hole up. We're gonna screw this one on in the same fashion with the notch facing the side. And then the last piece for this first step is this little handle catch, I, I think it's for the lock actually. Yeah, the lock buffer they call it. And likewise, this is going to go with this little notch towards the outer edge and just use the center hole here and bolt in just like the other two. Except unlike the other two, we're using a much longer M5 bolt. All right, so we have the panel we just finished and we also need the base panel. Obviously it's the smaller square one without the fan. And we need a collection of these uh, M5 by 10 millimeter, the small screws. Uh, I think we need nine of them. Yep, nine. And so we're going to bolt the side panel onto the base now. So on the side here, you have on the longer edge, you have this threaded tapped hole there. So that's the side that we're going to attach this panel to. And we're gonna have this panel facing up so that these are up and the triangle of holes is up and then it's going to line up like that. There's also a center hole at the bottom that lines up with that threaded one we just mentioned and a bunch of dust and dirt that we'll take care of. And we're gonna use these M5s. There's gonna be two in each corner, one there, and then there's two on each side bolting in the other way. All right, so I've brought back the other side. This is the one with that large cutout hole there. They call that the teardrop hole. And for this next assembly step, we need another M5 by 10 that we've shown you already. We need two M3 by eight millimeters. They're the longer of the sets of M3s that are in there. And then they call this the teardrop hole cover and teardrop hole cover bottom. So we'll need both of these two acrylic or plexiglass pieces. So just quick overview of what we're gonna do. Um, first, we gotta take off the protective film from these plastic pieces, but this guy here is going to go like this, and there's a, the M5 screw is used for there. The bottom, the other half of the plastic here, is going to use the two M3 screws and attach right here like this, uh, and then we're done for this step. When you're done, it should look like that. 
So it doesn't really matter, but I've installed these plastic parts out of order. They're meant to be the next step, but it's not gonna interfere in any way. Just make sure you don't scratch them when you're sliding this around on the desk. So I'm going to position this with these threaded little inserts here furthest away from me, much like we did with the triangle of holes earlier. And now we're going to need two more of these hinges. And just like we did last time, we're going to assemble them with that pointing away from us using the second set of two holes here. The other one is going to use the second set from the bottom two holes pointing in the same direction. And to bolt those on, we'll just need four of these M5 by 10 millimeter bolts. And much like last time, I'm just going to press it down firmly and bottom it out on the holes and align it that way to start. And we'll worry about fine adjustments later. Then we're going to need the 3D printed parts from before, two of these small square blocks, and then this larger kind of triangular-ish one. Um, and again, the triangular one is going to get attached with the longer M5 bolt. I think it's a 14 millimeter long M5 bolt. That's going to be the center hole on this side with the little notch facing the outer rail. And then we'll need two more M5 by 10 millimeter bolts, one for each of these small brackets. And it is the third hole in from the ends on either side there. So when you're done, it should look like this. So this panel is gonna go on kind of the reverse of that one. So we have the hinges at the back on this one, the hinges are going to be up at the front on this one. And the little plexiglass window here is going up there in that corner opposite of these hinges, like that. Once again, to attach this panel, we have nine of these M5 bolts, um, one of them going in the center, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So bolt those all in. So in the instructions, it may not show this top piece on the lid, um, but it's pre-assembled in our case. So I can actually skip a sequence of steps here. And as I said, this is the lid. Um, the back of the unit would actually be here. This is where your 3D printer's uh, power cord is gonna come out. You can kind of swing this window, slide your cord out into this little notch and then swing, swing the window back shut to keep it as airtight as possible. So that being said, the rear of the unit there will uh, be lined up with the fan exhaust port on the top cover here. Um, so this unit's going to go like that. Now, it doesn't sit on the outside of these. It's got to kind of balance inside like that much like the bottom panel is on the inside of these side panels. So while holding that there precariously, we need to bolt it in with probably nine, uh, no, 18 of these M5 by 10 millimeter bolts that we used before. I was hoping it was nine, but that makes sense. It's 18, nine per side. So while holding this up, I'm just going to hand thread in one on each corner just to get it stabilized and then I'll screw the rest of them in. So we're gonna start assembling the doors. Uh, first, we're going to do the rear door. This one you can identify because it only has the little lock hole and then four screw holes at the back. The other one has a square cutout in addition to the lock hole as well as um, some engraving at the top. So we also need the other side of the hinges. So this is the large side. We'll need two of these. And we need four of the M4 by 10 millimeter bolts for these hinges, two for each. And the kit comes with two lock assemblies. So we just need one side of that lock assembly. So we have the main lock assembly with the, uh, the nut that holds it on, the bar that swings when you lock and unlock it. There is a little wrench included to tighten this nut down. So we'll need those. So before we attach anything to this, let's peel off the protective film from both sides or it's only on one side. So just peel that off there. Oh, it is on both sides. The other side just happens to be clear. There we go. So I'm gonna feed these bolts up through. Perfect. 
and at the end we'll wipe off all of our greasy fingerprints off there. So then for the lock assembly, just undo the large nut. So the nut does have kind of a, um, a rough side to it with a little texture. Um, so the idea is to put that towards the plexiglass. Okay. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. And then if we take the screw out of the back, you can attach this guy. So with the key in there, we can kind of see how this is going to work, um, you know, locked and unlocked. Um, and we need it to be this way, this. We need it to be locked like that, sticking out the side, and it's gonna catch on that plastic piece on the other side there. Um, it doesn't really matter if you want uh, locked to be, um, you know, with the, with the key vertical like this, however you want to set it up. I'm going to have it so that locked, um, the key is facing the same direction as, as this guy, just for fun. So now, good tight fit. And so those little plastic braces that we added on the uh, top and bottom there are just to stop the door from kind of flopping in uh, further than it needs to, little stops for it. And then that plastic one acts as a catch for the lock. So that's cool. We've got the back on. We'll turn it around and do the front. So here we have the front, as I mentioned earlier, it's got a square cut out here, cut out for the lock, and then Made in Britain and the logo on top. So just like last time, we're gonna need the larger half of the hinges. So the larger half of the hinges here. Be careful not to lose these. I'm gonna throw them right on here so they don't go missing. I'm gonna go in there like that. The door needs to swing like this. So that means the hinge is going to go like that and lose the little washer in the process. Okay. Four of these M5 by 10 millimeter bolts will hold on the hinges. And then just like last time, we'll attach the lock and I'll attach it the same way as far as the key orientation goes. Perfect. So I should have probably done this earlier, but I've tipped the unit on its side and we're gonna install some feet. Um, it's a little bit dirty because we are in a bit of a construction zone here. So they do have nice wing nuts on them. Um, and then there's a nut, if I get this off, there we go. And then this nut on the bottom here is gonna be what sets the height of the unit off the table. Slide them in and then just screw the wing nut on the inside of the enclosure. And we'll do that for all four corners. So the Cora enclosure here has a couple optional accessory packs. One of them is a heat detector. That will sound alarm when it reaches a certain set temperature. I'm not exactly sure what temperature that's set at, but we'll figure that out. And then it makes sense to couple that with fire suppression. Now the fire suppression, because it is a compressed gas, we couldn't airship it here. Um, so it's on its way. Um, but for now, we'll just install the heat alarm. And then it, there's also a, LED bar. Um, so this LED bar comes with its own bag of hardware and a two-way kind of foam mounting strip. Um, and to install the LED bar, we need to unscrew the middle of the three screws on either side of, of the filtration system. And the instructions do show you installing the filtration system yourself. If yours came that way, you would just not install the middle screw in the first place. Ours is pre-assembled, uh, so we're gonna remove this middle screw. So the instructions refer to uh, M3 thumb screws and M3 bolts. Um, we don't have uh, M3 by 16 bolts or screws in the hardware pack that came with the LED lights. We do have some about 10 millimeter ones. And there are 
these uh, brass standoffs. Um, but I don't see why we're going to need thumb screws or 16 millimeter long screws or any of that kind of stuff. Because on the back of the units, there's these little clips, retaining clips. M3 screw fits right through there. And the nut on the underside inside the cabinet here that the original screw is threaded into, it's welded right onto the cabinet frame. Um, so I should be able to just screw this right to that, to that hole. Now, if these M3 screws are quite long, so they'll actually poke out the top. Yeah, and that looks kind of unsightly. So I'm gonna go with the shorter ones. They're maybe three, five millimeter long. So those clips are like this, you know, front to back. And on this side, there is a large hole in the, in the top of the unit. And that's going to be for the power inlet for the LED bar. So if you unscrew the little nut on the end here, we should be able to stick this side through that hole and then attach the nut to the top to hold it in place. Okay. And now just clip this in. Okay. In this bag here, there is a power splitter that will take our power input and allow us to run an output to up to three different devices. One of them is going to be obviously the filtration fan, plugs in the side of the top. The other one is going to be for our LED bar. And then we have a third, which there's a second large hole in the top there. And I just assume that that would be for either the heat detector or the fire suppression. Let's find out. So the heat alarm is actually battery powered. It's got a 10 year battery in it. Um, and it has this kind of little mounting plate, kind of like your home smoke detector might. So then that means that the other inlet there would be for the uh, fire suppression system that we don't have at this time. Um, this uh, two way tape strip, um, I'm not sure why I would use that since I have these nice clips uh, and that would allow me to take it down for any kind of maintenance or anything. Um, so I'm not going to make use of that either. So take the back plate of the uh, heat detector and two M3 by eight millimeter screws. And this has some adjustability, but we're gonna be screwing it into the two threaded inserts there. And then just take the unit, twist it on. Just make sure you line up stuff first. There, it attaches with a satisfying click. And so it works. And uh, make sure you test it periodically. It says the uh, battery is good for, for 10 years. I'll probably take a few minutes, throw a level on here and use the feet to just level out the, uh, the enclosure. But the last thing I have to install is a humidity and temperature gauge. Um, Right now it says 38% humidity and about 20.5 degrees. And this guy just snaps in the front door here. So you might find that that's a really, really tight fit. Uh, there are little ears on the side that are supposed to kind of snap it in place. I had to actually remove those ears because this cutout is exactly the size of the body of the unit. It is. It is not going to fall out. It's like a, it's a press fit in there. So I'm not really concerned about having the retaining clips uh, still on the, on the humidity and temperature gauge. Um, but that also helps seal up the door. Obviously you wouldn't want to leave a gaping hole there. So as you can see here, I've thrown an Ender 3 inside. This unit is basically the perfect size to fit something like an Ender 3. Um, if you have something with a little bit more height to it, something like the Artillery Genius, um, you'll run out of headspace because the roll is sitting on top of the frame and because you have the big base unit with all the electronics in it, that raises the unit off the floor as well. Um, and then the last thing you would need to do is obviously feed your power cord through that little teardrop shape that we installed earlier on. So stay tuned. Uh, in the future, we're going to do a video of a unit printing in here, do some measurements on particulate outside the enclosure as well as inside. And we'll use a phone app to measure 
the change in volume of the printer inside the uh, enclosure versus outside um, to kind of demonstrate the benefits of an enclosure like this. Hopefully you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more content. Thanks for watching.